For this video, we'll be taking apart the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2025. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, we'll remove the SIM tray as well as the stylus. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a black rubber gasket around the opening. And here's the stylus. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the vegan leather backplate. We can see that Motorola used the design which makes the back ambient light sensor cover look like a camera cover or a camera lens. However, it's not just a fake cover, they just made it more aesthetically pleasing because the cover still serves a function and there's actually a sensor behind it. You can see how the cover is designed to look like a camera. Also, the glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off so you wouldn't have to take apart the phone to replace those. Once that back cover has been removed, you can see the rear ambient light sensor which is located here, which sits behind that cover which looks like a camera. At this point, there are 13 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Taking a look at the top plastic motherboard cover, we see numerous antenna lines drawn which are the light gray color lines, including the NFC antenna. The LED flash is located here, and the rear ambient light sensor is located below that. The wireless charging coil is located in the center. Looking at the other side, we see a large area of graphite foam top transfer heat. The cables for the battery can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. As for the coaxial cables, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. Now there's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel primary camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, a liquid damage indicator sticker which is a white sticker, as well as copper film over the shields to help transfer heat. Looking at the other side, we have a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera, as well as additional graphite film, copper tape, and thermal paste on the back top transfer heat. One more thing to point out, these pins on the motherboard make a connection with the gold contacts on this flex cable, which is for the volume keys and power button. 
Once the copper film has been peeled off, we can see the SIM and memory card reader, as well as thermal paste on the processor, these chips, and the thermal pad on the RAM. Also, these contacts over here touch the gold contacts behind the proximity and ambient light sensor for the front to make a connection. Here's a better look with the thermal paste and thermal pad removed. There's an additional Phillips screw which needs to be removed that's holding down the bottom cover. Looking at the bottom speaker assembly, we see additional antenna lines drawn which are the light gray color lines. And here's the speaker itself. There is also an additional liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we see the charger port located here with a red rubber gasket around it, as well as the primary microphone located next to that underneath the covered shield. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner which is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the headphone jack located next to that. To replace either of those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. The finger pin scanner is located here which is also held down with some adhesive. Now when it comes to removing or prying off the battery, there are no pull tabs or pull pouch provided to help you pry it off, so we will need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath making it easier to pry it off. This is the 5000 mAh battery. Now that the battery has been removed, we see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the flex cable for the screen which is routed to an opening in the mid frame. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the top motherboard cover and the cover itself, giving you access to these flex cables, at which point you disconnect the battery cables and pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, and then you disconnect the screen cable Pry the screen cable off from the frame, at which point you heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. Once the flex cables have been peeled back, we see the 3D layer of graphite which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. And that 3D layer of graphite helps to transfer heat. This top plastic cover for the stylus enclosure is also held down with some adhesive so if you wanted to pry that off you could just heat it up and gently pry it off. Again when it comes to Motorola I don't like this design that they have where they wrap the flex cable for the volume keys and power button through the frame because if you needed to replace that, you'd also have to pry the screen off which poses a high chance of damaging a working screen. The earpiece speaker is located on top which is held down with some adhesive and there's another liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker on the frame which is seated underneath the SIM reader. Now on this phone if you to accidentally insert your SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.